Let's learn to have trust in our committees. Unless we don't have a line committee that should be able to handle this. Now, we have a committee of human rights. And the person you have there is actually a very good person. Human rights. All honorable members, we need to agree on this. Let human rights handle that issue where where they, there is a problem then we shall we shall intervene i have two i have two two suggestions one get a select committee and then the other one get a, 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 the line a, the line committee i'm put i'm going to put a question i have to clarify i've been misrepresented on the record madam Right, Honorable Speaker, with immense respect to my brother, the Honorable Dr. Chris Bariomos, actually he has reinforced my position by seeking this clarification. I have trust in our committees. I only said, on those matters where we have disagreed, not, not, not disrespected, we go, we have disagreed on matters to do with how to handle the missing persons. I suggested the Commission of Inquiry. With respect to the committee issues of the Honorable Fox Odoi, who is a senior to me, I guess not by, by age, but uh, uh, length in uh, legal practice, I only said the the select, a select committee is equally a committee of the House. I was shielding him the, because this committee has handled these matters, and we have not come to a conclusion. We are still haggling, we are still fighting, and we want to remain united. The speaker, in choosing a select committee, is guided by specific considerations. For example, the professions of the members is choosing, the experience she is choosing, the experience of the members she is choosing, the, 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 the collectedness of the members she is choosing and of course the numerics in terms of numbers you want to get people that are fewer and therefore dedicate sufficient time to address the issues in contention finally madam speaker it hurts all of us it hurts all of us that in the year 2023 when we are losing people to COVID-19, we are losing people to HIV, we can still lose people with our own negative interventions. I pray that... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, let's reduce the time. Let me have uh, Tim. Tim was raising a procedure matter, yes. then I come back to you. Yes. Madam Speaker was raising a procedure matter to my honourable colleague. Uh, uh, oh, it's not, it's not on the, on the floor. But, no, uh, that's I'll, not on the floor. I'll it's present, okay. I'll put my... No, you first it. First it. <laughs> honourable Boa. Um, thank you so much, right honourable Speaker. this boy is disturbing me. Madam Speaker, the law, in its conclusion, invited the House to rise to the occasion. I am rising to the occasion, first of all, to say the following. One is to thank you, LOP, because this has been a journey. And from a long list, we came to 18. This statement on page four, the law made a choice to highlight some of the cases that clearly indicate glaring contradictions. And right honorable speaker, I want to restrict my submission on the written text of the rejoinder. Parliament as the temple of legislation is a house of record. 
And our record must be consistent, in my humble opinion, not full of contradictions. This is the rejoinder to me in a layman language a response to the statement by the minister. I wish to start, and also I am going to raise glaring contradictions, because they are. On page 7, under the name Semudu Michael Jackson, on the attachment that we are laid on table, there exists a photocopy of the national ID of one Semudu Michael Jackson. And I want to confirm that the national ID is indeed a true record of Semudu Michael Jackson. However, on the list that was submitted earlier on, where the minister made a response, under the name Semudu Michael Jackson, these are now contradictions I'm also raising. The reference number given by the same source was KMG. GEF 460 of 2023. The rejoinder, the same name, Semudu Michael Jackson, has now a different reference number. The reference number is SDREF 84261120. The source is, is the statement. It is here contained on page 7. And this is Annex F of what the minister laid on table the other day. That said, right honorable speaker, I wish to move to Mr. Wangolo Dennis on page number 6. And the reason why I started with this because the leader of opposition chose an evidence-based submission especially on the four, and this is an evidence-based parliament. On page number six, under the case of Wangolo Dennis, the leader of opposition in his rejoinder... Yes, a, a procedure. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, earlier on, you kind of showed us guidance by appreciating the Honorable Katuntu for coming up with <laughs> solutions. Right Honorable Speaker, the Chief Whip is before us here talking about matters that are going to raise tempers further. Right Honorable Speaker, Right Honorable Speaker, we had reached a level of giving solutions and I remember the Honorable Segona was advised to go to solutions. Can the, can the government chief whip do not take us back? Because we have those arguments. You have to tell us Go to the level of solutions. Give us the solutions. How do we end this? That's all we are waiting for. Madam Speaker, are we proceeding well with the Chief uh, Whip honorable. taking us back to peripherals honorable. when we had made steps? Otherwise, all of us can go into those small, small arguments. Honorable members, I loved how come the house... And I really, I want to appreciate Katundu, Honorable Katundu. He put a house in a calm position. And we should be, we should have finished this issue. Yes. Honorable members, and I told you people, let's not open the Pandora box. Let's not, because they are there. Let's not open the Pandora box. 
Now you've seen what the, this side is also bringing. Now we're on ping pong. Ping pong. Wait. Wait. He's not lying. He's not lying. Honorable members. Honorable members. If you want to make a noise, Nansana is not very far. Uh, you get it, eh? Let's agree. You know, we already have solutions to this. Because for me, I would put each and every item, every, every prayer to, to, to vote. And we conclude on this. The issue of detaining people without trial is something which was even said is not anything to be discussed. It is not correct. Honorable members, honorable members, I want us to start with that issue of detaining people beyond the 48 hours. It is that that leads into another disappearance. You get it, eh? So that should not be a, a, an issue. Honorable both of both, what do you think about that? Honorable members, listen, let's solve a problem. I, I think, uh, right, Honorable Speaker, I want to agree with you. And uh, I want also to appreciate our senior, Honorable Abudu Katuntu, though he's holding his chin after he has given very valuable uh, prognosis and uh, way forward. However, what needs to be clarified here is if we are to get solutions, we need to get solutions based on correct facts. The issue of human rights is as human as it is. Nobody can ever show any sign of pride which is actually absence of space for wisdom. Yes. Yes. What are the members? So, so the issue, the These issue. People are obstructing of, me. The issue of pre-trial. Yes. I have looked uh, at. Uh, uh, listen, this is a very important issue. Honorable oh, both of both. Yes, and I, I think that we were making, a, yes. we're making a way forward. In one way or the other, this has to come to an end. How it ends, we can also agree on it here. And we must agree. The General Muhozi stated that we are alive, we are human. Being a minister does not detach us from the populace. True. Being ministers or being in the government does not mean that we are blind to the suffering of other people. So we should not be cast out as we are insensitive, numb, or... Honorable members, let's listen. I thought you want a solution. I said to be portrayed so. And you, you are my junior, you need to listen. 36,000 36, people, 422, is captured on the page 15 of the Lopez report, which these statistics were given by the government. What is disturbing here is that all, it says all these are on remand, courtesy of detention without trial. Yes. You never get to be remanded if you've not initiated the process of trial. Any basic lawyering skills. <laughs> now, if we can, which can be outside here, and I've said it here, we, we need I am Minister of Defense, I'm in, um, in the Minister of Defense, actually even now holding the fort. 
if I get to know the specific number and the names of people that are with us, or minis, or CMI, or not in a gazetted place, we can make undertaking to resolve this matter. But those who are in remand, those are people in a legal process. It could be delayed. No, no, no. Yes. Okay. First, first, first. Clarification. Yes. I, I think. Uh, why don't, the, the why don't you leave him to finish? Remand is remand. It cannot be that that one. And I need the glove to, to clarify here whether this is what he meant that the 36,000 people, 422, which government said they are on remand, and these are the people he construes as detention without trial. That basic lawyering skills and the knowledge should do help us and let love clear uh, if love, people... love. Uh -uh. let's have love first of all i want to thank the comrade uh, uh, for rising to the occasion to speak to this gap i i raised those figures right on the speaker to bring to the attention of the house the extent of re the lethargic approach to justice, especially in our criminal justice system. And you, you listen to, to, to love when he's making In fact, discussion. OO is brilliant enough to know what actually I was referring to. He's only trying to be political. I did state those figures to tell the extent to which our prisons are congested and part of the congestion is occasioned by person detained without trial. Secondly, he's asking, he's saying that he's committing to intervene if he gets to know who is in CMI, who is with the ISO, from whom are you trying to know those people with the CMI and ISO? Is it us or you in charge? No, what he says is going to find out from... Right on Please. speaker, that was not his statement. He, no, let me finalize. And you see, because we are dealing with the evidence, I have laid bare the fact that there is admission of government agencies to the detention of Damarira. Let him respond to Damarira in particular terms as a starting point. There is a procedure matter. Right on speaker. Thank you for allowing me to raise the procedural matter. Honorable Speaker, you are allowing the House to debate on what I would call half information from the right Honorable Rop. Rop has presented a half of the information and has laid it on the table, some other information that would help this House take a decision. Because we have not seen all the information, it would be a disservice to this country and the House to take a decision. And he has tricked this House to provide any, uh, to, pro to demand for an unconditional release, which is not in the power of this House, which I don't agree with him. He has provided also for two establishment of a judicial commission of inquiry. Commission of judicial of inquiry cannot go with a select committee. And we don't have power to establish a commission of inquiry. If we have power to establish the select committee, which select committee can get all the information and presented materials under Article 9 of the Constitution, let it be so that we have a select committee, we process the matter, we come here, take a decision, which is informed. Otherwise, we have a half information from the speaker. Would it be procedurally right for us to have all the information as processed, as presented, so that we take a decision? Thank you. Honorable members, uh, we'll take a decision on whether we'll have a committee select, whether a human rights or whichever, we'll take a decision at the end of it. We wanted a clarification first from uh, Honorable Bothobo. Since, since the general said CMI or whichever is under him, so can you give us a, a clarification and what you think about 
the specific prayer. Specific prayer. Right, Honorable Speaker, uh, I have understood now the, what Lop referred to about the delay in trying people and the number that he quoted. And I think that one still falls under Uganda police. But when we are here, and the Uganda prisons, when we are here, and I thought for once that since human rights is as un universal as a Catholic church, I thought we would speak with one voice. <laughs> that we would not politicize anybody's right, anybody's death. Right, Honorable Speaker, now that the right of the lop, my very good friend, we've never had a... He has clarified to me, I am devoid of any other doubt that he was referring to those who are in detention, who are in, on remand, not those in CMI. So what is the way forward? What is the way forward? Can I have a Attorney General? Thank you very much, Rachel right, Speaker. Thank you very much, Rachel right, Speaker. The matter in issue is the allegation that so many people are in detention without Asuman. trial. Asuman, why are you pointing at my age? Come back where you are seated. Come back. Right on our speaker, the matter in issue as raised by LOP is that so many people uh, on are on you remand speak without after that. trial. Mm -mm. Use it. I repeat. Right on our speaker, the matter as raised by the leader of opposition is that very many people are on remand without trial. That we accept and agree. And this last week, this very parliament passed an amendment to the Judicature Act to increase the number of judges. And you know for a fact that following the enactment of the Go ahead. You know for a fact that the Judicial Service Commission has been appointing judicial officers to increase the number in order to deal with the backlog. So, no effort is being spared to make sure that the numbers of people that are on remand pending trial are brought down. Thank you. Thank you. We actually increase to 35. 35. Much obliged, Right Honourable Speaker. The, the land attorney general is making reference to case backlog, meaning that the state investigated and therefore matters are pending trial. Is the land attorney general aware of the so many empty files of persons detained for more than two years without any report? of an investigation. Are you alive to that? Do they require appointment of judicial officers, like you're saying, that they were pending? When there's not a single, we have appeared before court, and all they say, for more than two years, the state is still investigating. Okay. Is he alive to that fact? AJ? AJ? Uh, thank you. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker. My friend, the Deputy Attorney General, the Judicature Amendment Act we passed was in respect of increasing justices of the, the Court of Appeal and Supreme Court. The bill we passed? Yes. It's not yet an act. Okay. In respect of the justices of the Court of Appeal and Supreme Court, who only entertain matters at the appellate level. And we are talking about pre-trial detainees, 
people who have been detained either by remand of court or otherwise, but who have not been tried for longer days than is constitutionally provided for. Two, we are talking about putting people in jails in respect of non-existing offenses under the guise of the what subversive activities. Can you look through your prisons and get all those people who are in the prisons on the infamous subversive charge and to those who have exceeded their constitutional debts on remand and have them released? Honorable, and, and these are things I'm saying that let's now go to solutions. Let government go and look at its prisons, look at itself. You get it? Look at itself and understand if there are people who are being who are in prison and have no cases. If they are political, it must be with a thorough analysis. Criminality should not be mixed with the politics. Let him respond. Thank you for your guidance, right honorable speaker. I do appreciate my senior colleague, Honorable Wilfred Mwagaba. I spoke first in respect of uh, the administration of judiciary law that we passed in the 10th Parliament, which allowed the Judicial Service Commission to appoint more judicial officers. But be that as it may, be that as it may, I don't know where you have gone now. be that as it may, I do co understand the concern of the leader of opposition that there are people who have exceeded the mandatory period on remand. Now, we need to work backwards. I can undertake to engage with the Chief Justice, with the, the Principal Judge, with the Chief, chief Registrar, so that they find out and the Deputy Chief Justice and the DPP. We shall work together as judiciary, work backwards, and see if they are people who have spent a period longer than they ought to on remand, then they will be you know, released. You know, you know the problem? The problem it is like you don't want solutions. Somebody is committing himself and saying, I am going to make a fall up and then get back. Chivumbi. Then, uh, Honorable. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker. When I was in school, and I was there at the same time with the, my friend or both or both, we were told the incomparable, incomparables, things you cannot compare. We are speaking about any government, any office of government, be it a member of parliament, undertakes to protect people's lives and property. And I'm speaking for justification for number two. I'm being specific on the establishment of Judicial Commission of Inquiry. Right Honorable Speaker, could it, can we find space to compare a missing person with financial implication. Be because what you are trying to and, do... And, and also before you go there, can you look at all your books of law and find out whether you have a body mandated to handle issues of human rights and ask yourself, where are you running from that body? You as Parliament of Uganda made formed that body gave it the powers to handle issues of human rights now you're saying let's go away and form a judicial service commission i, I want you to look at the yeah, two things yeah, yeah i will navigate those issues right honorable speaker i think we should be the last persons 
where any Ugandan is missing. Countries commit troops to die. They commit, they go to war if their persons are missing. Now, anyone, even they go to war to reclaim dead people, those who have been in the front line, if your colleague dies, you can commit more soldiers, risk more death to claim a dead person. But here we are on this day, trying to invoke a financial implication in the argument against finding missing Ugandans. Right Honorable Speaker, I find that argument not only weak, no, I can't use that word. I find Who it is that who has said nonsense? Who is that? Who? Uh uh, not Chivumbi. Who is that? It is you. No, you. Nansana. Get up. You can't do that in this house. You people, you're not going to take us for granted in this house. I have a level of patience. Can you come and apologize? Uh, um, uh, sorry, Madam Speaker, for the statement I made. If it, withdraw it. I'm withdrawing it. But what, I was, what statement? Uh, Madam Speaker, I was not You said nonsense call. How? It was not on liquid, but... Can you withdraw it? I've withdrawn it, Madam. Wamahaj, With due continue. respect, Madam Speaker. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker. There is a... There is a... A video that I've watched over and over again by President Yoweri Museven. I think that video was... That statement he made immediately after taking over power. He said, he said it on what? He said his government, he will not preside over a government where a Ugandan is lost and cannot be traced or are not accounted for. Oh. Our argument in the select committee, right honorable speaker, we don't have the powers, is to recommend to government if it finds it necessary, under these circumstances, where, right honorable speaker, one, the committee of parliament has had a go at this issue. The Human Rights Commission has had a go at this issue and failed. And given that those other committees have had their chance and fallen short of satisfying or finding Ugandans that are missing, and we are talking about 18. We, are, we can speak about a single Ugandan. We must find somewhere to trace any Ugandan who is missing. And if it means a little bit spending public money, it should be spent. I like government to come back here and reject this decision and say we don't have that money. That could be it. So I find that argument, which has been really able moved by my senior colleague, fairly not comparable. Even in relative terms, I studied the law of relativity. Even in relative terms, it's difficult to take. Can you imagine we have a heart, we have a space in our heart to, 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 to talk about financial implication for a father, for a mother, for a daughter, for a son, of a father missing, I think I would like to appeal to this house in this hour, evening hour, is that that recommendation of judicial inquiry cannot be struck down because of financial impl What then are resources of government for? If they cannot be for the, to serve to people, to, to protect people's life. Right, Honorable Speaker. Procedure. Procedure. Yes, I Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. It is not how beautiful you can put the point. What does the Constitution say? What does the Constitution say? 
article 93 it bars this house to do what you are saying just can i have the constitution please this is not an academic argument it's not an academic argument if you want to do something please however well intentioned you are you must do it in accordance with the law so and right honorable speaker if i may read this are we talking about the judicial service commission i mean the judicial commission yes right honorable speaker okay Right on our speaker. Parliament shall not shall and shall means mandatory unless the bill or the motion is introduced on behalf of government. Proceed upon a bill including an amendment bill that makes provision for any, for any of the following. Proceed upon a motion, that is B, upon what? A motion. And resolutions always arise out of a motion. Include an amendment even to that motion, the effect of which would be to make a provision for, any, for the purposes of specified in paragraph A of this article. So, it, however well intentioned you are, you must act within the law. And if you want to act within the law, because you are well-intentioned, I can tell you, you'll be acting illegally or unconstitutionally. Honorable Katonto, if I understood Honorable Chivombe very well, he knows he and is aware of the law, he's aware of Article 93. And for him, he's saying, he's requesting government is requesting government not that he does not have the locus to bring the, the motion to that effect but he's requesting government and that's why i was saying now that is requesting government that's where we will put now we will now go and look at prayer by prayer and see whether government is willing to bring a motion to that effect or not Government, we don't need explanations. Yes, there's a uh, procedure matter from Dr. Chris. Hey, you want to submit? Yes, there's a procedure matter. Thank you, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I do understand where the opposition are coming from, but I, I just, I just, I just wanted us to look back, Madam Speaker. I'm on the floor, please. I just wanted us to you, look back. You understand where our colleagues are coming from. Yes, I yeah, understand where our colleagues are coming from. Thank you for the clarification. Madam Speaker, the Committee on Human Rights, Parliamentary Committee of Human Rights, presented a report on this uh, matter. Don't I, take I'm, a... I'm, no, I'm just, I'm, re I'm reaching to Honorable. a point. I'm just coming Honorable. to a point. Ma Please. Madam Speaker. Sit, 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 sit. Honorable, sit. Uh, right honorable we are now moving towards the the closure you uh, uh, i chaired that committee uh, right honorable speaker right honorable speaker it's in the interest of government and honorable members listen to Hajj. right honorable speaker it's in the interest of government and it is in the interest, I think, most fundamentally, for the head of state who is on oath to protect and def protect people's lives and properties, to ensure and to take responsibility to ensure that missing persons are accounted for. Even if they were to be pronounced dead, it's in the interest of government. I want to employ, to employ my friends here and senior colleagues in this parliament that they should find a space within their government 
to go ahead and good enough the Prime Minister is here, I would like to implore you to go ahead, given the contradictions and the consistent, the right honorable speaker who was in the chair when this issue came up, read a number of times your house, even you when you are in the chair, where these issues have featured. So they are not one off. Consistently, there have been arguments. Therefore, we want to, to implore the government side Thank to you. find it within their power to appoint a judicial service commission. Okay, co co the co commission Honor, of inquiry. Uh, commission of in judicial. Uh, right on, judicial if you might permit. Of inquiry. If I were to speak on number three, because we are finding, so I'm only speaking on the. If I'm to speak on the last one. Which last one is. Uh, number. Select committee, of parliament. I think my. Honourable members. Senior Why friend. don't we handle these uh, prayers one by one? One. What, uh, would have even finished. Let's handle one by one. One. Prayer number one. Prayer number one. Uh, thank you very much, right honourable speaker. I think on prayer number one. The land that the general had already made a commitment, but we want to clarify that the government has no political prisoners. Ugandans are arrested on the basis of suspicion for having committed a crime. And the, the concern being raised here is that uh, there could be Ugandans whose trials have delayed and the Attorney General undertook to check with the relevant authorities that in case there are people who are in jail and their trials are delaying, then action will be taken. I think that one. You, On see, you see, before you go and make analysis of these prisoners, you cannot know whether they are political, whether they are what. So what I want, what we want you to do, what we want you to do, what we want you to do, go and make analysis and report back. Right, Honorable Speaker. Uh, which, 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 which Attorney General yes. made a commitment? Yes, that's what I'm saying, Right, Honorable I am speaking as a government minister. No, 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 no. You see, Madam Speaker, a political prisoner presupposes that Honorable Poga is arrested because his opposition is noob. And I'm saying no. That the people arrested by government Honorable by the members is on the basis Honorable of members. the suspicion of committing a crime. Honorable that's why, members. Yes. Honorable members, the issue that is being raised is on the borders Article 28 of the Constitution, fair theory, and Article 29, freedom of conscience, expression, movement, religion, and assembly uh, association. So I, I want executive to go and examine these prisoners and cause release of these prisoners. Go and examine them. The prisoners who have been there beyond the mandatory time, who have not be, been tried. Yes. I, I have not, mentioned, speaker, I have not uh, mentioned the political prisoners. Right? I am saying prisoners who are there. On yes. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, can I, I, I request honestly that we go by the proposal of the Attorney General. Yes. Uh, instead, of, instead of setting a bad precedent, which is not even practical, that people can be released through Parliament. Let's go. No, Parliament is advisory. Yes, yes. Parliament is ordinary. Because that's what it comes to. By the way, speaker. as members of Parliament, we are constrained.
to do the work of courts. That's not our role. And as such, we are only implore, imploring government to go and act. Our work is not the work of court. Prayer two. Yes? I am very proud of you. What you are telling the executive is not that we are not directing the judiciary to release. Withdrawing a case which you instituted is a function of the executive which is charging people. I have been old enough here. I have witnessed President Museveni talking to various groups. One group came from Rukunjiri. The other group came from uh, Teso. And he told them, I am going to solve that. And it was solved. And we are not here to show our might. We are, not here to we are here to show our wisdom, reason, maturity, and statesmanship. Yes, I will clarify. You have referred to a group from Kisoro, Rukunjiri, and also Teso. Has any other group done the same? or you are trying to achieve what that group achieved through this house. Can we go to prayer number two? I thank you. I thank you for ignoring him. Prayer number two. <laughs> thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. The, the commitment earlier on by the Land Attorney General is a step in the right direction. And I concur that what we are doing here is not judicial, nor even quasi-judicial. And therefore, we have no space ordering the other arm of government to act. But the executive here at our disposal can commit time frames. The executive cannot work endlessly. We would like to know what the executive would do, that they, we can know that they have done their part and only another arm has not done their part. And that, that, that cannot be endless, bearing in mind the time uh, people have spent in detention without trial. The executive cannot have latitude of working in endless space. May we get commitment of space, time frame from the land at general right on our speaker. Because can we again have to wait for another one year, two years, and then the general comment is that we made a commitment. Right on our speaker. Uh, Honorable Attorney General, you have an answer? You sure? <laughs> what? Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I did say that I do understand the observation made by the leader of opposition. But we shall go beyond the list they present because we do not know its authenticity or not. But we believe there might be other people now in the he's system. He's asking on the timeline. I'm time coming. Frame. That's where I'm heading, right, Honorable? Right, Honorable Speaker, I commit to write to the Chief Justice, to the Deputy Chief Justice, to the principal judge, to the chief registrar. I will copy that letter to the chief whip, to the prime minister, and the leader of opposition. I cannot give timelines because I do Honorable. not have control Honorable. over courts. Honorable members, Honorable members. I want us to be very careful. Honorable the judiciary members. is independent. I want us to be very careful and mindful of the fact that the judiciary is independent. I'm simply going to express the concerns raised by this parliament to the head of the judiciary, 
the chief justice. Uh, honorable, honorable Lord, what, what we can do? Since this matter is still before and is continuing, I don't think those are the last people to be arrested or whichever disappear. Uh, I want us to, to continue. Listen. I want us to continue engaging in this. Uh, give me a write-up on what you've agreed with the, the other arms of government. I personally am going to engage the head of executive. I am going to engage the head of executive on this matter and then I will get a response to that effect. But right on the speaker, that commitment is heartwarming. Uh, but because we are a house of record, the, the land attorney general needs to be very clear on his intentions. Namely, that does not require the land attorney general to seek the indulgence, let alone the, the express or tacit permission of the CJ, or the deputy, or the principal judge to discontinue prosecution. Especially the nature that has not even evolved. It does not require the chief justice. So what we want to understand exactly which what the land attorney general wants to pursue, that we can know what we are dealing with. Because these are state functions. But uh, right on was speaking, honorable yeah. members, it is, it, is, it is the law that you can't direct DPP. What are we talking about? The independence. Honorable members, LOP, I am going to give you a feedback because I know there is, a, there is one person who will resolve this. What? Prayer two. The second prayer. Government. Our view, Madam Speaker, is that if we combining two and three, is that we have trust in the institutions of government and even in this parliament. And we do feel that if there are issues which are still subsisting, the existing institutions of the state, like Human Rights Commission, and the others can take them up, because I read the report of the Human Rights Commission, their concern was non-cooperation of the affected parties. If the leader of opposition can undertake that he can work with the families to make sure they provide information, because most of them, they were saying, we want clearance from our party. That's the concern the Human Rights Commission was raising. That's all good. So, Honorable, no, no. Honorable so, government, so our we, have, view, we have two views. Yes. The two views on, on two is a judicial commission of inquiry where Honorable Katun to rose on an issue of 93, Article 93, and that is only mandated for you. What we can only do is to implore government to bring a motion to that effect. Then the other issue is that we have a constitutional body that is mandated and that would, they would proceed under Article 48, 51, 52 and 53 of the Constitution of Republic of Uganda to investigate and that is the Human Rights Commission. And it is the only one mandated to handle issues related to human rights. There are two positions. Yes, right to the speaker, I was submitting on the very issue that the numbers have been oscillating from 400 to 38 in the Human Rights Committee. Commission, not committee. No, committee of parliament, 38. To 30, the Human Rights Commission, and now to 18. And according to the report of our committee, 
they reduced to four. The Human Rights Committee. Now they rejoined that. Now, our view as a government is that the number Lop, dropped. Lop and uh, Honorable Bua. Can I be listened to? Lop and Lop. Honorable Bua, can you go out and sort out your issues? If you want to fight, you fight in the corridor. Yes. Yes, our view as a government is that there are existing remedies within our legal framework and institutional framework. I read the report of the Human Rights Committee. And actually, that's where the number dropped from 30 to 18 because they were able to trace the twelve. And their concern was that the next of kin who were provided we are not cooperating. And many of them were saying, James first come back. We have to get clearance from our political party, NUP, some of them. So our request is that if the leader of opposition and leaders of the opposition can uh, undertake to help in providing information. Then this work, if there are areas where there is still dissatisfaction, the Human Rights Commission and the other state agencies can do this work. And therefore, we shall not bring a motion to this effect. Our view is that this can be done by the Human Rights Commission, provided our leader of opposition supports the families to make sure that information is provided, they can trace this, yes. And, and honorable members, I want to, to also remind you that under Article 54, it, it talks about the independence of Human Rights Commission. And, um, and uh, for me, I'm not going to go into argument. Those in favor of the Human Rights Commission, I mean Judicial Commission, I'm going to put two questions. With your indulgence, Madam Speaker, we, we need to get these uh, issues very clear and without emotions. I have, with my team, gone out of our way to establish how the Commission worked. In fact, on three occasions, the family members attested to the fact that the Commission asked them to negotiate with the government for a financial settlement. Secondly, it's not true that these families did not cooperate. In fact, when the commission at one occasion declared that they are going to close the files, we reached out to the families, put them in a vehicle, and took them to the commission. And they pointed to people that were saying we have never seen them. It says, you came home, we saw you, why are you denying our existence? So right on, Speaker, this commission is so disabled in the circumstances to deal with this matter. It is conflicted. It has been negotiating financial settlement. Right on, Speaker? The chairperson is a brazenly partisan. Brazenly partisan. Right on, Speaker. With due respect. Right on, Speaker. Secondly, in the minister's there's statement. An order. There's an order. There's an order. Honorable, honorable Mpuga. Honorable Lop. We are three leaders of this institution. And you know very well that the uh, Human Rights Commission reports to Parliament. Before we give them an assignment, why don't we call them and talk to that team? and agree with that team, this is what we expect of you. That is what we expect of you. Short of that, you're in appointment uh, uh, committee, we can send these people back to the sender. If they are not doing what is expected of Ugandans. My order. Right on the speaker again, in uh, General Mohose's submission earlier on, he clearly stated that uh, police was able to form an NGO and reached out to the SIC. Not to form to pretend to be an NGO. Of course, that's why I have gestured with inverted commas. They formed one, and that's when they were able to access the families. So the assertion of uh, the good doctor here that the families not cooperate should not be on our record is wrong. 
actually, the, one of the demands we are making here of the good general, you share with the parliament the report of the police NGO because they were able to reach the families and therefore the fact that the families were, did not cooperate does not arise. Now, I, In I, the submission I have made, the video evidence, the families attest to the reach outs, the proposals for financial settlements, and all manner of indecent proposals, Mr. Speaker. So they were wow. reached, and these good honorable ministers not so well. Now, so the, advise the, me. I want your very sincere advice. The person who is supposed to bring to propose for the Judicial Service Commission is government. In the circumstance that government settles for the institution that was made by this house, that's Human Rights Commission, what happens? Your right on the speaker, of course the jury is not on us. The jury is out on the executive to prove their commitment to resolving this matter. And I cannot answer to government commitment. The jury is okay. out on them. Right Honorable, this tells you, listening to, to Honorable Mpuga, Matthias, Uwabasaka, and uh, and uh, why are you bringing an order does he come from bugiri <laughs> he comes from masaka uh -uh. yes and, he uh, comes from masaka and he's proud to be a ma from masaka we we are making this seat uh -huh. we are we are making when you see a neighbor complaining over a lost neighbor's chicken you know, the neighbor is a thief himself. But, uh, but, but, but in this case, we are making, we are making this progress and making retrogress. Asuman. Honorable. Asuman. I even I, thought you were in Kigali. I did not even mention. What are you doing here? I did not mention any name. Uh, I did not mention uh, uh, any uh, name uh, here. Uh, <laughs> right, Honorable Speaker, we were making some progress here. No, we are getting progress. Yes. And uh, if, you've, if, asked a if very, you mm. you've asked a very pertinent question to the opposition leader lead of opposition and uh, what would be the effect, the total sum of when or even the resolution that we shall make because you may not believe in the Human Rights Commission it does not believe, that's what I got and uh, it, from him may not believe in the committee of parliament but he would want a select committee of parliament which will be appointed, taking all the three or four sheds of parliament. This just tells you how complicated this matter is, that the lead of opposition, he is with the team, he is determined to stretch this house beyond your limit. Honorable members, love, love, love. Let's help each other. You know, one person who has, uh, one person who has always been supportive to me and continues to be supportive to me while in this seat, is none other than Honorable Mpoga. And I don't think you would want to stretch me to, the expect, uh, to what is expected. Honorable members, I am putting a question. I am putting a question. But now don't stretch me. Uh, <laughs> no, no. But, Madam Speaker, I, I understand the demeanor of OO. And, and you see, he's trying to, to invite the presiding officer into this because the executive have failed to own up. Now he wants the presiding officer to take 
a decision while they have time and space to commit on what they are going to do. Madam Speaker, this matter has nothing to do with a vote. It has got to do everything to do with understanding the duty of the executive. We have failed, to, underst we have failed to understand each other. No, Madam, Madam Speaker, what, what? I, I challenge the Prime Minister to raise the microphone and say that government has failed to understand their duty in this matter. Then the House will take a decision. It has nothing to do with the vote in this House. Honorable members, maybe before we continue, me and Honorable Mpuga and Honorable Taewa will want to meet the Human Rights Commission on Monday in my boardroom. If the, the institutions of this government are not working, then we will send these institutions back to the sender. Because you cannot say that the chairperson has a problem. How? If she's not working, let's get her out. We have the powers. Huh? Impoga, bear with me, and that is... Ma Madam Speaker, yes. with your indulgence, yes, I am entitled to speak in this house. So don't take away my right. With the, because you... <laughs> my honorable sisters should do. Just listen. I don't want to be misunderstood as if I am putting words in the mouth of the Human Rights Commission. With your permission, allow me to just read a sentence from their report. Because the sec well, No, we are going... Yes. Honorable because member... The, the leader of opposition... No. Let me the, meet... I am going, we are going to meet you with the Human Rights Commission. Okay? Why are you fearing the Honorable, <laughs> Honorable members, we are giving this responsibility to the Human Rights Commission and uh, we will have a meeting with them before we give them the assignment. And they must report to this House, report to Parliament as prescribed by the law. Next item. Next uh, prayer. Next prayer. Right, Honorable Speaker. Now we began with the issue of missing persons. Now we are going to the area of rape, defilement. Yes, this is what the number three is talking about. The prayer. We are on three. On number three. Three, yes, I'm on number three. Number three, the leader of opposition is proposing that we appoint a select committee to look at issues of rape, defilement, and so forth. And uh, our view as a government, that if there, are, if there are issues that we must investigate, the Human Rights Committee of this House is adequate. Yes, it's enough. So we can task it to look into these issues, it's our own committee, and we believe every member of parliament has competence and capacity, they can do good work and report back. Honorable so members. We, we reject the issue of the select committee. Can I, uh, I want to hear from government chief whip. Madam Speaker, the practice of this House in terms of such proposals is dictated under the rules of procedure. In the point of the leader of opposition, prayer number three is need for select committee. Under our rules, such should be formally moved in form of a motion and the House takes a decision as prescribed under the rules of procedure through a vote. And would I persuade you, right honorable speaker, as the custodian of the rules of procedure? But this is a house of record and it is guided by rules of procedure. Right honorable speaker, 
May I, if it pleases you, request that the side that has brought this proposal adheres to the rules of procedure such that you subject it to the prescription of the rule and we take a decision as a house. I beg to move. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I, I acknowledge uh, the depth of knowledge of the rules by my Honorable Comrade, uh, the Government Chief Whip. I want to assure him that uh, by proposing that way, we were alive to the command of the rules. However, we thought that this House of Parliament would consider the possibility, and when it is agreeable, a motion will be due removed. After all, under Rule 59K, the Speaker would indulgingly allow the moving of a motion without a notice. But you don't surprise the House or the presiding officer in such matters. So I want to say to his spirit that we are not devoid of knowledge of how the rules function in as far as motions are concerned. But we were they wanted to beseech the understanding of the House on how this would work. Secondly, right on the speaker, we are not trying to impeach in any way the sanctity, powers, and abilities of the House committees. We thought that because the committees of Parliament can on their own motion move over these matters, and remember these matters have been with us in this House for the last two years, and the Committee on Human Rights has never moved itself let alone seeking to follow up matters over which we have resolved variously on officials. The general understanding is that probably they are not keen. And therefore, the House would consider to selectively choose from within itself a team to consider this matter. Right on the speaker, that was the premise for that prayer. There's a procedure from Mumbabazi. Uh, honorable <laughs> Thank you, right honorable speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, the lead of opposition is alleging that this house, the committee of this house on human rights commission, uh, on human rights has never put in any efforts of investigating the matter at hand. Right Honorable Speaker, this matter is not new. It is something that has been on for long since we began I think uh, our term of office on, on this committee, it was our first assignment. We had actually a list of 65 people who were alleged missing. We met those people, uh, we, we had to investigate, and out of 65, we remained with only seven that could not be accounted for. Right Honorable Speaker, it is a concern that we a uh, uh, lead of opposition. procedure. Uh, are we proceeding well that the lead of, of opposition comes up now and says we have never investigated the matter? Uh, Honorable Mbabazi, the, the, the issue being raised is on fisheries, uh, not human rights. And, and uh, for me, in my thinking, Honorable members, in my thinking, if my brother Lob does not have all that trust in human rights alone, we can have two committees. We have always got very good results when we combine, combine committees. We can get a committee of internal affairs together with the human rights, and they will handle that properly. Honorable members, that will give you results. I want to thank you for today, the house adjourned to two tomorrow.